This is Twit. Well, folks, some of you might have been in the industry long enough to remember those small little dongles you used to have given to you by an organization that helped, that actually had a rotating code on it, and you used it to connect to your VPN or network. Um, ancient tech, ancient tech. Well, with the phone authenticators and other services and devices, this, becoming, this is actually becoming easier for organizations to deploy. Well, what about consumers? Well, they have the concept for your, like, in fact, your for your credit cards called chip and pin, which that came into market and allows you to capture a pin and uh, and your and the data from your chip to basically have a unique transaction for every transaction. Now that that actually has turned out to be not as secure as we hope. In fact, people have been uh, able to capture one's pins, uh, whether you're using cameras or not, and be able to kind of steal that card and still use it. Now, uh, what? Chip, card providers have been trying to do is trying to actually make online transactions a little bit more secure using a, a much different approach. Well, slightly different approach. Now, what if card providers had a way to provide a rotating CVV, which is actually that little number on the back of your card called the card verification value? And, and would that add to the security? Well, we'll have to see. Now, this feature seems to be focused more on online transactions uh, rather than those brick and mortar retail store transactions that consumers use their physical chip and pin. Now, the first pilot of this new program was PNC Bank, and they wanted to run the program for about uh, 90 days to see how it affected consumers. Now, the tech is fairly simple. Uh, it provides a small e-ink display on the back of the chip uh, with a rotating three-digit CVV number. So this is, this is fairly interesting because this means that not only you have the chip and pin for you to use it in the brick and mortar, but when you go home, you have a very similar kind of uh, approach that some of these authenticators have where now you have this rotating number that they either you have to have the physical card in hand in order to guess uh, or to get so that you can actually do the transactions online. So guys, I want to bring you back in. I'm going to bring you in here. Now, Curtis, is is this really better than chip and pin? Well, I, I think it's a, a good addition to chip and pin. Uh, if you look at it, chip and pin is primarily a, a mechanism for what's called the card present transaction. That's where you hand over a physical card uh, at a point of sale terminal. The CV number is one that tends to be used for a card not present transaction uh, over the phone or online. And so what the, the, the CVV number is trying to, its upgrade is trying to increase the safety of the card not present transaction. Uh, that's important because merchants pay a different, um, a, a different transaction fee for card not present transaction because the security is seen as less. The losses are greater statistically for card not present. So if they could come up with this mechanism that makes it better uh, that makes it so that a criminal could not just copy it down once and uh, sell it with a, in a bundle with the card number and, and name, uh, customer name, then all it takes is knocking off a few fractional percentage points of fraud losses to mount up to be big, big dollars in the industry. So I look at this as, as a really positive step uh, and a step in the direction of, of something else that's coming that we'll talk about in a few minutes. So this is interesting. The, the, the chat room is actually bringing this up, which is around the fact that, hey, there's all these other pay systems today, whether it's Apple Pay, Google Pay, which are also trying to uh, affect this process where you, we basically talked about, um, Curtis, you talked about, hey, not having your card and those types of transactions. So they're trying to, to, to help fix that problem as well, where this way, you know, you either have your phone or your device and you kind of authenticate yourself, whether it's biometrics or whatnot. So they're attempting to fix this problem as well. Uh, Brian, I want to throw it over to you. Is, is this better than something like, let's say, a software authenticator? Um, because I know that a lot of people who are obviously buying using their cards or, or their phones or their mobile PCs online to buy things, they actually have their PC with them. Why not just use an authenticator here? Well, the the problem is that uh, you got to tie that authenticator to your credit card. And while it's very easy for us to uh, tie our credit card uh, or our authentications to, say, our email, our Google Mail, Hotmail, uh, and our, our work accounts to a software authenticator, 
Um, we to tire the use of your credit card to a software authenticator requires cooperation and the full participation of the credit card company. So that's not something that's really going to scale terribly well, or I haven't really, I'm not smart enough to think of a way to make that scale. Um, perhaps there's a business there for someone, but, um, this uh, gives you a little bit of both, and and it's a really good sign that that they're recognizing that card not present fraud is really hard to stop. Um, that that CVV number is not only can be stolen just like the rest of the uh, the credit card number um, if it's not been tokenized such in a way that you know the the Apple Pay and the the Android uh, solutions uh, offer, but. Uh, it can also be guessed at was what we found is that is that when you're looking at credit card fraud, card not present fraud in particular, is that um, given a, a valid credit card number, so all you got to do is steal the credit card number, not even the expiration date or the uh, CVV, is uh, there are bots out there that the, the fraudsters will use that can actually guess those numbers with a, with a fair degree of accuracy. Right. Uh, Curtis, I want to throw this over to you to get your opinion on this, because I know even the chat room, CRM is bringing up the fact that, hey, Authenticator would be good or maybe even YubiKey using it here. Why do they have to have it on the back of the card? What's it? What's its purpose? Is there any purpose to, to being going beyond what these mobile devices and mobile PCs already support today? Well, I, I think what we have is the first step uh, in a transition that the credit card companies uh, are, are trying to anticipate. And that is the step away from the requirement for physical credit cards. In the same way that we've seen in many cases for, for personal use, uh, checkbooks have, have all but disappeared from our uh, financial lives. The credit card companies and the banks foresee a day when most of our point of sale transactions happen using tokenized methods uh, on our smartphones. They know that that's coming. They, they see, even though the use of things like Apple Pay and Google Pay are small, relatively speaking, they see that it's coming and they like it because it is tokenized, because it doesn't require shipping sensitive information like the credit card number and PIN and things like that. Uh, around on the internet and therefore makes it much less likely that a criminal can intercept a transaction and get stuff that is, is usable long term. So I think what we're going to see is um, something like this. Uh, the e-ink is a decent response, although in many cases I, I think we, we get to worry about um, battery life uh, because if you have to replace the card every year, uh, the cost goes up even more. What you have to do again is start balancing all of these things like the, the cost of fraud and the percentage of fraud, which has been fairly consistent over the past few years, versus the cost of replacing these cards and the advanced technology on the cards. I think we are going to see these uh, tokens and the rotating CVVs on the back of cards um, start to come in as a bridge technology before we get to the fully tokenized transactions based on the payment systems like Apple Pay and Google Pay. Right. I think you bring up a good point. I think it, it's probably it could be a gap technology and kind of going along with that. You know, now they say, hey, it actually costs quite a bit more. Uh, to actually um, actually construct these cards because they have to put these little e-ink displays and they have to put the circuitry in there to generate the code. But also, it's probably going to cost more for organizations to adopt. Now, Brian, you've 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 been you've seen implementation uh, for organizations across the board. You know, implementing a new service as even just a gap thing is that something that's uh, that's a value prop for organizations to do? Uh, is it enough of a value prop for them to do this to to get an increased cost in their process to support this kind of rotating number, uh, even if it's just a gap technology? Uh, that, that's a great question, and I. Th I think it's you know it, it's evident that there's got to be some value to it because of the co the costs that we already see in this in in this initial report is you know fifteen dollars a card versus like two dollars a card so these the actual physical card is more expensive to even send so that that gives us a sign of if the credit card companies are willing to send out 
uh, credit cards at that cost level. Um, that already tells us that they they see there's a return on investment for them here uh, versus how much it's costing them in fraud and and how much card not present fraud is actually costing them at this point. <laughs> 